What's up, everyone? Today, we are talking about alpha-gal, also known as the red meat allergy that comes from a tick bite. And in this video, we're going to talk about how common alpha-gal actually is, some of the things you want to keep in mind if you contract this syndrome, and we're going to talk about a desensitization protocol that we discovered and we want to share with you guys. So joining me today is Johnny. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Happy to be here. Yeah. And do you mind just telling us a little bit more about what you are, what you do here at Heart and Soil and uh, some of the things you know about AlphaGal? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Johnny Lawler. I'm a health guide and animal based researcher here at Heart and Soil. And we're talking about AlphaGal today. So Johnny, for those who don't know, let's start from the beginning. What is AlphaGal? So AlphaGal syndrome is a tick-borne illness, right? So it comes from the bite of a lone star tick. Um, it's an EGE modulated immune response. So basically what happens is the tick bites you, you get this alpha galactose sugar, which is where the name comes from, right? This is found in red meat and it's also found inside the tick. This tick bites you, gets that alpha galactose sugar into your bloodstream. And for some people, not all, you will get an immune reaction that can range from, you know, very mild to severe anaphylaxis. It's actually the number one cause of anaphylaxis in the southeastern United States, right? So above peanuts, above shellfish, above any other, you know, common allergy you hear of, what they're finding more and more each year is that these random cases of anaphylaxis are directly tied to an alpha-gal immune response. I think, you know, along those lines, what else is really tricky is even knowing you have alpha-gal is half the battle. Yeah. Right. So we know that um, a lot of physicians aren't even aware of this syndrome. Um, they're not, you know, aware of a correct procedure to detect it. Um, and, you know, that's on the that's on the physician side, on the patient side, you know, once you're bitten by a tick, it can take two to three months for this to fully develop in your system. Wow. Right. And sometimes it even takes multiple tick bites before it actually turns into a full blown immune response. Yeah. Right? So that's one degree of separation. The second degree of separation is unlike other IgE immune responses, right? So like, you know, we all know a friend who is allergic to peanuts or some other allergen. If they even come near it, their face will blow up, their, their throat will swell up. It's like very dramatic and it's very quick. Yeah. What's weird about this, and it's due to the sugar and how quickly it passes through your, di your digestive system, yeah. it can take up to eight hours after eating the red meat for that peak immune response to happen right wow. so you have doctors who aren't aware of it aren't really sure how to correctly you know look for it when to look for it and then you have patients who may have not known they're bitten by a tick and you know may have not even realized that the steak that they ate eight hours ago is what's causing this really bad symptoms wow and because of this do you think people are being misdiagnosed Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. We, you know, the, the stat right now is 500,000 cases in the U S um, since starting around 2008, 2009 is when we started tracking that. Um, so we're at 500,000 now, but there is also a stark increase in these numbers as well. You know, we've seen anecdotal data from people emailing us here at heart and soil, but even just the numbers, you know, taken by the CDC, we've seen uh, an increase of, I think, 13,000 um, to around 19,000 in a span of two or three years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's interesting. And then on that note, like geographically, where is the, these ticks? Are they, are they everywhere? Is it in sp specific locations? Yeah. So uh, there's the highest prevalence uh, in the southeast, southeastern United States. Um, it was first originally located in Virginia. Um, and so we've seen it kind of spread out from there, um, which makes sense. It's very rural areas and this is a tick-borne illness. So this is going to be in like, you know, that Appalachian area where they, they just seem to thrive. Um, and then, you know, when you're moving outside of the United States, you'd probably have Australia would be next in line, uh, parts of Europe. What is interesting though about AlphaGal is that, you know, as we said in the beginning, it seems to be, uh, it uses the, the Lone Star tick as a vector, but we're seeing this disease pop up in places where the Lone Star tick is not typically found, mm. right? So there may be other ticks that carry this. There may be even other insects or um, some unknown vector of this disease that is transmitting it because 
the only place in the world that we have not seen an active case of alpha gal is antarctica because nothing can live there right yeah (laughs) Yeah, that's that's interesting (laughs) so johnny the question i have now is should people be worried should people be scared like how common is alpha gal really so we don't want to scare people but it is really important to raise awareness about this as it's trending upwards um and you know i think we want to offer a little bit of hope in the in the end yeah 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 which is good because you know um meat red meat specifically right is at the base (laughs) of what we consider to be healthy food for humans to consume so yeah i mean this scary thing this syndrome kind of touches you know close to home for us here yeah right because you know we believe in this in this diet as the most nutritious diet for humans and then you have this disease coming up you know pretty randomly and pretty recently that runs you know antithetical to this diet that we preach so uh yeah so this sounds pretty scary um (laughs) the first thing that comes to mind for me is like how do i avoid contracting this obviously right, it's a right. tick so you know to some degree it's hard to know whether you get it or not until later but um, are there any preventative things that you can do to avoid contracting the syndrome yeah for sure and you know it, it really kind of like you said it's a tick right yeah. so just being cognizant of the you know typical tick prevention methods right so you know being aware when you're going to rural areas especially in the eastern united states um you know there's certain seasons when ticks are more out and about wearing long shirts, long pants, you know, common, common advice is to wear a bug spray, which has a lot of DEET in it. We're not huge fans of that, but there are a lot of great um, alternative bug sprays that work almost just as well. Yeah. So really just kind of weigh your options there. Um, yeah. Beautiful. That's and, and then if an individual does unfortunately contract this syndrome, um, you know, you kind of said there might be a little bit of hope. So could you talk a lot, uh, talk about, you know, potentially what you have in regards to, okay, I have alpha gal, what do I do now? If you do, you know, if you have been cognizant, you have been kind of like paying attention and you think you might have contracted this disease, first thing you need to do is go to the doctor, right? Um, And that's why I was saying earlier, it's like really important to be aware if you're in rural areas, if you have a tick bite, because chances are they're not, that's not going to be their first go-to if you're having, you know nausea some weird immune response so it's important to be aware of it go to the doctor um and they're probably going to tell you like hey this disease typically lasts from three to five years although there's plenty of cases where it just doesn't go away Mm -hmm. um and then when it comes to diet of course they're going to tell you to avoid red meat right so um you're gonna be kind of left with eating turkey fish chicken and um, other forms of protein like that. Okay, interesting. And red meat specifically too, I know she didn't mention pork, so is pork in that regard or what else besides red meat is is potentially in there? Yeah, so this alpha galactose sugar is found in beef, pork, venison, uh, lamb. Uh, Sometimes there's even just a tiny bit in dairy. And if Mm. you're you're sensitive enough, that can be a problem. Mm. Gelatin capsules, right, found in our supplements and plenty of other supplements. Um, Again, it's coming from beef, so it can have just a little bit in there and can be problematic. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, Johnny, that doesn't sound fun. Um, I'm not stoked about that. Um, You know, I would hate if I had to avoid raw milk or... Um, you know, red meat in my diet. So is there any hope? Is there any sort of protocol or something that exists out there um, that has worked for people in regards to being able to maybe speed up the time or what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, we, we do have a, a glimmer of hope. Um, you know, as I said previously, we don't recommend anyone try this, especially, you know, by themselves under, not under medical supervision. Um, but we we were able to find this uh, study coming out of Turkey in 2017, right? So as we mentioned before, this diet, being able to eat red meat is really important to us. So, you know, we have a research team here and we like to explore all the literature surrounding topics that, you know, are relevant now or maybe relevant in the future. And with this alpha-gal syndrome on the rise and with customers and clients emailing us in, pretty consistently now, maybe like once a week saying like, Hey, I've contracted alpha gal. We wanted to look into this. So we found this case report, uh, coming out of Turkey showing 
two people following a desensitization protocol um, using very small quantities of red meat. And over five and a half weeks, they slowly titrated, ramped up this dose. And by the end of the five weeks, five and a half weeks, they were completely desensitized to red meat. In other words, they were able to consume red meat again. That is the takeaway. Yes. Mm. Yes. Now, of course, it's important to point out that this was one case report um, following two people. Yeah. Right. But there is a little bit of, you know, medical historical precedence, right? This isn't the first time we've seen an allergy sensitization protocol work. Um, this just seems to be one of the first, if not the first times people have attempted to do this with AlphaGal. Interesting. Okay. And could you talk a little bit about um, the email team, the support team that we have here at Heart and Soil? Uh, because we get a lot of emails, right? Of oh AlphaGal. God, yeah. Could you talk a little bit about that specifically? And then also, um, I believe you uh, shared this protocol with somebody um, through the email system, and uh, they decided to try it on their own under medical uh, supervision, and they reported that it worked well for them. And I think you even have a, uh, a testimony. Could, so could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we have this really cool you know, program here at Heart and Soil. Obviously, you know everything that you'd normally find at a company, but you know we really care about finding the truth when it comes to health, you know, we follow or this this, com this company was founded by Dr. Saladino, who, you know, truly was pioneering a lot of these new health trends that you see everywhere. So we like to keep that spirit alive here. And while we're not medical professionals, we spend hours like researching unorthodox treatments, um, trends and stuff that we think might be very interesting and potentially like life saving for people in the long run. Um, and we actually got like an incredible testimonial that I would I would love to share, you know, right here. I, yeah. I think it really does offer um, some hope in this situation. Beautiful. So this client wrote, the day after you sent me the alpha gal desensitization protocol, I started exposing myself to red meat again. It's been 5.5 weeks and I'm no longer responding to the ingestion of red meat. I mean, it's a miracle. I started out with nausea and headaches, but it subsided quicker than expected. I've been ingesting beef products daily, and today I had a beef taco for lunch and did not notice any side effects. All of that is to say, thank you so much for taking the time to share that resource with me. Not many people would share a resource and for free, no less. So that was freaking awesome to get in our email box Monday morning. Wow, that's that that is very beautiful. Um and very interesting too because, you know, you said what is 5 to 6 weeks for five her? 5 and a half weeks. 5 and a half weeks, yeah. And versus, you know, kind of the mainstream information on this is 3 to 5 years or like you said potentially forever. Exactly. Well, Johnny, this protocol definitely gives me hope and uh very stoked to hear about it. So for those who want to learn more about this protocol, um, I will link the case report in the description so you can check it out. And uh, for those who want to uh, maybe get some questions answered around AlphaGal or other health questions, um, they can reach out to us here at Heart and Soil under the email address radicalhealthatheartandsoil.co. And you might even get Johnny himself responding to you. Uh, but thanks a lot for watching this video. If you know anyone who is suffering or curious about AlphaGal, feel free to send it to them. And if you like this video, feel free to like it and comment. And with that being said, Johnny, thanks for joining me and happy to be here, man. Had a great time. Thanks, man. Hell yeah.